Omar Shepard is the project specialist in digital learning and computer science education with the San Bernardino County Superintendent of Schools. I found Omar on Twitter because he was just sharing some really powerful things about the um, computer science seasons of CS professional development program that he's working with in California, but also issues about equity and the importance of getting all of our students to be exposed to computer science. So Omar, thanks for coming on the show today. Oh, it's absolutely an honor. You know, you see lots of different things coming across X or formerly known as Twitter. And you don't have <laughs> a chance to follow up and have a conversation. So I'm happy to be here today. Sometimes when people listen to a computer science show, they just turn it off because they say, well, I teach math or I teach first grade or I teach kindergarten. Okay, we need everybody to stay tuned in because CS is an equity issue that concerns us all. Now, I know you're passionate about this because I have read your tweets or X's or whatever we call them now, Omar. Um, to give us the, the elevator pitch for why CS is so important and the equity issues that underlie what we're seeing right now. In preparation for chatting today, I kind of began reflecting on what might be some ways to really demonstrate the intersectionality of computing in our world, um, from industries to various sectors. And I was really reminded of the research of Jeanette Wing as she began to evaluate really where we are as it relates to computing and its intersections within various industries in our world. It doesn't matter if you're thinking about things like the medical industry, um, law, or um, education, or any other sector. We're now in a place where computing is really a fundamental part of the ways in which we engage the world. So many of our students are walking around with literal computers in their pocket. You may say, hey, that's a phone. It is a phone, but thanks to the developments in computing, it really has an opportunity to do so much more. I was once reading an article on the numbers of relationships nowadays that were being created all based on social media. And you're thinking to yourself, well, gee, you know, um, how might this be represented in what we're giving our kids an opportunity to learn as it relates to how these different tools can be utilized. And of course, you may think of organizations such as ISTE, an organization that helps to raise awareness around the importance of digital literacy, meaning helping our young people be informed about how they perceive information as they're coming across it, being um, critical thinkers and evaluators of what they're looking at and thinking about the impact of it on themselves and on the world. Computational thinking is something that all of our teachers need to understand from kindergarten all the way up because we've got citizen programming right around the corner where if we can describe an algorithm or we can describe a process that AI is going to be able to help us write programs that we can then supervise and use. So this, this impacts every teacher in every space. Indeed. Indeed. AI is one of those areas that, while it's not new, um, as a result of new developments such as with ChatGPT, it's really began to proliferate to speak around its utility in edgy spaces. And mm -hmm. one of the things we've been doing here in San Bernardino has been working with educators to demystify AI. In other words, mm -hmm. to say that AI is not magic, it's actually machine learning. So... But there are also equity issues. I teach AP computer science principles. And one of the things that I teach my students is understanding that you need not only diverse teams of people, you need mm -hmm. diverse alpha feedback, diverse beta feedback. You need to have diverse teams. Mm -hmm. And the lack of diversity in computer science overall is a, is a strategic national issue for it's for, for states, for countries. So what are you seeing? Because I think that was the tweet that actually kind of got me into your work was just about some of the equity issues we're seeing in terms of the students who are accepting and, and taking CS courses. You know, I really appreciate you bringing that up because one of the interesting data points gathered in my collaboration with an advocacy organization, CS for CA, that's Computer Science for California, and looking at their data tool, it's a tool that can allow you to search by um, any district in the state of California, any specific school, to really look at 
what does the enrollment of who is taking core computer science classes um, at their schools look like? And you begin to review some striking statistics. Um, as an average, I would say, you would notice that of females and underrepresented groups such as Latinx communities, African American communities, are by and large completely um, um, at significantly lower levels as it relates to who's actually taking on computer science courses. Um, you would find often you'll have Asian and Caucasian, predominantly males, filling many of these computer science courses. But when you look at the realities of that thing that we just talked about earlier, the impacts of computing, who codes matters and ensuring that you don't enter into a space where this notion of algorithmic bias emerges, you have to ensure that all students are being given an opportunity, A, to be exposed to this learning opportunity, but then B, to be able to access those careers that can allow them to join those teams to be able to contribute to the programming. There's a famous video out there. It's many years old, and I invite someone to look it up if they're interested, and it's titled, HP computers are racist. Now, the computers really aren't racist. What happened was there were two employees in a radio shack. One of the employees was much more fair skin, um, was really enjoying this new camera that had been developed that had the ability to track the subject and to be able to um, be utilized as a really engaging video feature. And they are just really loving it. And they call over their colleague, hey, come check this out. This camera is so cool. Well, the colleague happened to be African-American of darker skin. And as they got in front of the camera, they realized, hey, hold on, this camera's not following me. It's not tracking me. It doesn't seem that it's working. It seems like HP computers are racist. Well, in fact, what happened was the development team um, that was actually, uh, that was actually um, designing the camera they only had fairer skin or Asian males being used in the model. So as a result of that, even though other persons of different um, colored skin might be able to get in front of the camera, it wasn't reacting in the same way. And that's why it's important for us to think about this idea around um, giving more students an opportunity to be accessing computer science education. Here in California, as of 2018, we actually have K-12 computer science standards. And our standards open up to say that all students can learn computer science and all teachers can teach computer science. We know that all students aren't going to become programmers. Rather, we know that as a result of the intersectionality of computing in all subject areas, it's an opportunity for students to engage in learning that's meaningful and prepares them for tomorrow. Let's talk just a little bit about Seasons of CS and how it works and the success you're seeing. The Seasons of CS are actually a grant-funded project thanks to the funding through the Educator Workforce Investment Grant. It was originally a $5 million grant that provided an infusement of an additional $15 million to be able to deliver professional learning throughout the state of California to educators K-12, to be able to support them in building their capacity to bring computer science into their classrooms. So as you're looking at the state of California, there's actually 58 counties. Good. And these counties from the far north all the way to down south have been regionalized into seven regions. Each of the regions looks at the data from cs for ca evaluates what are the needs for computer science professional learning in our region, and begins to put a plan together to provide an access point for educators in that region to be able to participate in professional learning. Here, where I work in San Bernardino, we're a part of Region 7, representing Orange County, Riverside County, San Bernardino County, Imperial County, and San Diego County. And this is a chance for any educator in the state to check us out on our website, seasonsofcs.org. Take a look at one of the offerings. Now, the reason we're calling it the Seasons of CS is because we have thematically organized workshops through the autumn of CS, the winter of CS, the spring of CS, all leading up to our flagship offerings, the summer of CS. Which brings me to this point. 
We don't know if there'll be a high school requirement for computer science here in California, but if there is, we're going to be ready because we're planning to host a flagship offering this year titled CSPD Week. That's Computer mm -hmm. Science Professional Development Week. It'll be in Anaheim, California, and public school educators that attend have an opportunity to earn a stipend, engage in intensive professional learning, and will even cover their accommodations at the Anaheim Marriott. I invite wow. you to check it out. Seasonsofcs.org. This just really represents a strategic emphasis of the state of California on computer science. If you just look at the, the, the wealth creation and the job creation and the prosperity creation, um, when we say it's a strategic issue, I mean, we know that AI is pretty much the issue of our time, but right embedded with AI is all of the CS. You can't really separate that ecosystem. So, Omar, you've given us so many exciting things. Uh, Omar Shepard, uh, I do recommend taking a look at the Seasons of CS and seeing this amazing video that Omar shot to promote it. A little tiny tidbit, Omar, there was an earthquake during the shooting of that video. Are we right? Yes, you are. In fact, I was mid-sentence as the room began to rumble. But you know what? It didn't waver our commitment to championing <laughs> the Seasons of CS. Well, it's a fantastic video. I was just complimenting him on that. And then I found out he had an earthquake and he kept on uh, literally yeah. rolling in the middle. Yeah. Uh, um, thank you for coming on the show. The website is seasonsofcs.org. And so thanks Absolutely. for coming on the show, Omar. And I invite others, um, if they have interest in following what I'm doing, to follow me on X at Dr. Stem, D-O-C-T-O-R-S-T-E-M.